I love the scripture in 1 John 5 in the message. It says that the conquering power that will bring the world to its knees is our faith. What's the very thing that the enemy's after? Our faith. What's the very thing that causes us from not moving forward? It's doubt and unbelief, but faith propels us to move forward, and it's the currency of heaven. And so um, let's see here. Oh, good. Breakthrough. Se so this is our miracle season. And so I have gotten my little miracle journal, and I have my journal that I write in, and I have an expectation for miracles. I have an expectation that daily God will open up opportunities and doors for whatever that looks like to you, but opportunities for miracles. And again, we have not because we don't believe it. You know, we, we call those things which being out as though they are, and that's something that God wants us to really get today, that I am not leaving here with deficit. I am leaving here today knowing that my God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think. And the fact that you're here and the fact that you've worshipped, the fact that you've pressed through, even though you've gone through hard times, that's faith. Just because at times when you're, when you're, oh, you know, and you have that, that agita in your spirit and you're not, you don't feel like you're breaking through, but you're still pressing through and you're still reading your word and you're still praying. That's faith. Don't discount what you're doing because you have the enemy that's going to come in and he's going to lie to you and tell you what you're doing isn't even worth it and that God's not true. The thing about faith is you have to understand the character of God and his integrity. We were singing it. God is good. I was reading in Nahum today. God is good. And, and Nahum first nine this morning, God, you are so good and you are a stronghold. You are a very help in time of, of trouble and that you're faithful and true and that you watch over your word to perform it. You know, and the Lord wants us, and I've said this before, and I will continue to say it, to come up. We're, like, like all of you right now, just, just check out where you're at spiritually. Are you happy? I don't know about you, but I always want to move forward in the Lord. It's not this frustration. It, I mean, and there's frustration at times because I believe we're not fulfilling the call of God on our life when we're just sitting and not doing, and God has called us to step out. Everybody, put your hands up for a minute. These are healing hands. Every single one of you have dunamis power right there, and they're healing hands. God has called us to lay hands on the sick. He wants us to be the light. Where are you? Who are you ministering to this week? Who are you praying in your neighborhood and trusting God for the miracle work and power for breakthrough to come forth? And that's what, you know, it never gets old. It never gets old. This is what God is saying to us. Don't allow you to just sit there in, in complacency and unbelief thinking that what you have isn't worth it. Or, or compare yourself to others, right? A lot of Christians, you're comparing. Well, I don't do what they do. Well, yeah, because you're not them. You know, we all have our own individual call. And God wants us to shift off our own mindsets of disappointment, of doubt, and unbelief. And he wants us to develop our faith muscles for miracles. We have to develop a mindset. You can move on to the next slide. That says nothing is impossible with God. That is my, my scripture that I stand on. Next one. That nothing is impossible with God. Do you believe that? I know that some are battling here with health issues. I know there's some battling with family issues. I know there's some battling with financial issues. Do you believe that with God, nothing shall be called impossible? Amen. And so a lot of times, you know, God is calling us to just decree the word every day. It's very, you know, the gospel is simple. Decree your word. Pray. Speak that word. Don't meditate. And we're going to go through the scriptures and show exactly the strategy plan of what the enemy does, but how we are overcomers. But listen, we have to turn the enemy's voice off. Now, I was preparing this message and I, and I, like Peter, I mean, I do, I, I, like you, I meditate on the word, I worship, and don't you know that voice wouldn't shut up? Oh my gosh, I thought, I'm going to smack this thing, but it was something where it just wears at you, and wears at you, and wears at you, and I thought, you know what, and at first, you know, like the Bible says, why art thou cast down, O my soul, hope thou in me, and I was just... I said, Lord, if, if anything, the devil is going to have to know what your word says and that how defeated he is. But at that moment, 
when there was that war going on, that wasn't what I was feeling. It was just, all right, I'm done with this. I don't need this aggravation any longer. Blah, 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 blah. And, um, oh, Jesus, it was, it was a heck of a season and a heck of a week. But God, you know, and so the Lord said to me, who do you believe? I said, well, it, it would make it easier if you just kind of do things a little quicker for me right now. And he said, yeah, but, you know, the Bible says, listen to me, in Romans, that, that he works all things out, all things out according to his goodness and his riches. And, you know, he works it out on our behalf. And many of us here have been through hell and back. Can anyone say amen to that? Amen, amen right? And you think, do you think that's not precious? Do you think the Lord hasn't taken that into account? Do you think that you're not people that are refined and vessels of faith? Because you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here if that were the case. So, so don't look at, don't listen to the voice that says, well, what's the point? Nothing has really shifted that you're standing and believing God for. No, there's that refinement that's been going on. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to go through the fires, he didn't uh, say, oh, you know what? I'm going to take you out, and you won't even have to go through that. They had to go through the fires. That doesn't mean that we're not victorious. It means there's a refinement that's taking place. It's a, Lord, I'm, I'm leaning into you. I'm choosing to trust in you with all my heart. Lean not on my own understanding and all my ways acknowledge you so that you direct my path. Lord, I am leaning because I know what it's like where the enemy has had jurisdiction over my life. But I rather, I choose to serve you. I choose to press into you and choose to worship and stomp on the enemy's head because there is peace. There's, there's, a, there's that victory that you get just even through the word. And, and, and that's something that I am telling you. We cannot not read the word. We cannot not meditate on the word because that's how you get your spiritual muscles. That's how you get built up and knowing who you are. What is your purpose? What's your destiny here? If you don't know who you are in Christ, you're going to get your behinds kicked. You have to know that he's called you to be a woman or a man of God, that you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you, that you're not defeated, that you're not the tail, that you're the head. And that God has favor. There's a scripture in Psalm 30 that says he gives you favor is everlasting. Don't go in looking and say, well, you know, when it comes to me, it probably won't work. You know, that, that's where we mess up. And we have to make sure our minds are completely aligned with the truth of the word. 